Tonight, we bring in Isaiah Brown's sister, Yolanda Brown, and their family attorney, David Haynes. Thank you both so much for joining us. Uh, Ms. Brown, first, just want to get a sense from you how your brother's doing tonight and, and if you can share what doctors are saying. Uh, actually, I just had to sign more paperwork. It looks like we have to have another procedure done tomorrow. Um, vital sign, signs are still kind of up and down. Uh, and he's still on the breathing machine. And they're trying to slowly um, slow it down a little bit. But right now, it's still seriously touch and go. And, and he's in critical condition at this point? It goes back and forth. One day it could be stable, the next day it's critical. The last two days it has not been two good days. And help us understand what was happening when your brother was shot. The deputy gave him a ride home and then he was fighting with your brother when the deputy mistook a phone for a gun? Okay. Yes. Have you gotten any other details beyond that? Uh, as far as they weren't really arguing, he was just trying to get him to calm down and trying to figure out, you know, why were you calling the police back to get back to your car? Um, and then that's when it just went completely different. It wasn't really a fight or argument between the brothers. It was just trying to get him to calm down to figure out, maybe we can call somebody else to try to get back to the car, but it just didn't really work out that way before he got upset. And Mr. Haynes, you've talked about the failure in policing here. Walk us through what you think went wrong. Well, there are a number of uh, errors. I think one of the biggest things that stands out is there appears to have been a failure of communication between 911 dispatch and the deputy who was dispatched to the scene. Uh, another unique fact of the case is that, that this deputy had given Mr. Brown a ride within the past hour from his car. So he had an opportunity to observe him, see that he was not violent, not agitated, and not armed. Uh, also, what is unique about the case is that, as you mentioned, he was on the phone with 911 at the time on a cordless phone, uh, and he was unarmed. And so uh, there were some uh, communication issues. Uh, the deputy, I think, thought he was arriving to a different situation than what he was, in fact, arriving to. And uh, we believe that there are failures on the serious failures on the part of dispatch because they had over 90 seconds to really apprise him that, that Isaiah had said clearly he was unarmed and had no uh, weapon. Uh, so those were issues. Once the deputy did arrive on scene, he was by himself. Uh, he basically escalated the situation. Unfortunately, instead of trying to de-escalate the situation, uh, there are a number of things he could have done regarding light the scene better, wait for backup, and use the communication through the 911 operator, none of which he did. And he, he very quickly made the assumption that the cordless phone was a gun and shot multiple times, tragically. And Ms. Brown, your family, along with the ACLU, pressed for the release of that 911 recording. Tell us why it was so important that the public hear what was said that day. Well, it was just a lot going on, and it just seemed like the story was trying to go in the way of the officer, and I knew otherwise. So I just, I just wanted Isaiah's name to be remembered or known as something better than what they were trying to portray him to be. And, and if I may add, we, we have just asked for full transparency uh, the entire time. And we've also asked uh, that additional, and we'll be filing a formal request, that there is additional audio, uh, which between the dispatch and the deputy himself, which has not been released, as well as the transcript of what was being communicated to him in the squad car. So we are calling on uh, the authorities to release that, and we'll be filing a formal request immediately. And beyond that, do you have legal plans, Mr. Haynes? Well, at this time, uh, we're praying for his recovery, uh, of course, number one. And uh, secondly, we will be filing those information requests to get that information. Uh, we do understand, uh, well, a special prosecutor has been appointed, um, and we do understand that she is reviewing uh, the potential of charges against the deputy. Of course, the family is uh, hopeful and expecting that, that criminal charges uh, be brought against him. Uh, and then at that time, we'll, we'll monitor the criminal case and also be uh, looking at all available options as well uh, and uh, assisting Isaiah through what we hope will be a successful physical recovery. And lastly, Ms. Brown, for those of us who have not had a chance to ever uh, know Isaiah, uh, how would you describe him to people who've never had the opportunity to meet him? Isaiah was the life of the party. He always wanted to have fun. 
Um, he loved to laugh. He loves music. Uh, he loves everyone. Um, he's just a caring person. If, if, if you called on Isaiah, he would be there. And you said was. Uh, do you get the sense that he'll pull through? I'm, I'm praying, and yes, yes. Ms. Brown and Mr. Hainsworth, thank you so much for your time.